Hey lovelies! So I know as well as anyone when it comes to planning dinner, we usually focus on the main event and tend to leave our side dishes as sort of an afterthought. Today I want to change all that with some inspired ideas I think you guys are going to love that are super simple to pull off even on a busy weeknight. Starting with these absolutely unbelievable crispy roasted potatoes. These are so crispy guys that they actually rival french fries, but they happen to be a whole lot healthier, which of course I love. Now, the secret to making these totally amazing is actually boiling our potatoes first. So I'm getting started by chopping up some potatoes. I'm using red skin potatoes. As you can see, I am leaving my skins on. Why? They have a ton of fiber and it makes your life easier, which you know I am all about. I'm gonna cut my potatoes into about half inch to three quarter inch cubes and then get them in some water and get them boiling on the stove. Once they've reached a boil, you wanna go ahead and let them cook for between six and eight minutes. The idea here is not for them to be fully cooked, but we want those starches to sort of come out to the exterior. That's what's going to give us the amazing crispy edges. Once our potatoes are ready, we are going to drain them in a colander and then return them to the very same pot. The heat in that pot is going to help some of that excess moisture evaporate, which is going to help our potatoes get crispier more quickly in the oven. At this point, I wanna toss my potatoes with a few tablespoons of melted butter. You could use olive oil in this recipe, but I think melted butter definitely makes these the most delicious. I'm going to season these simply with a little garlic powder, some salt and some pepper, and that's really it, guys. We're just going to transfer these potatoes to a parchment lined baking sheet then we'll get these into the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for between 30 and 40 minutes. About halfway through the cooking process, it's important to pull them out and give them a quick toss to prevent them from sticking. Then you can get them back into the oven. You'll know they're ready when they are super golden and crispy on the exterior, but still soft and tender on the inside. What is not to love about these? I serve them up with just a sprinkle of freshly chopped parsley, and they'll pretty much be the perfect accompaniment to any main dish you can think of. I would recommend this awesome garlic brown sugar chicken. If you have not tried this recipe, guys, it is on my must try list. Next, lovelies, because of course we could all use more greens in our life, I wanna show you these awesome garlic butter green beans that come together super, super fast but have so much awesome flavor thanks to some amazing smashed garlic cloves. Once you've got your garlic smashed, you can get to work on cooking up your green beans. Now this recipe all starts in a skillet. I'm using cast iron, but of course stainless steel, nonstick, both would totally work here as well. And to that, I am going to add some butter. Once that butter is melted, I am going to get my garlic cloves into the skillet. Now, as you can see, I have left them whole, but just given them a quick smash so that butter can infuse with that amazing garlicky flavor. As soon as my garlic is nice and fragrant after about 30 seconds to a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and add a good splash of chicken broth to this. The chicken broth really is the secret to success in this recipe. As soon as that chicken broth starts to simmer, we're going to get our green beans into the pan. As you can see, I'm using French green beans here. They're a little bit thinner, but if you only have regular green beans, those will definitely work in this recipe as well. We're just going to pop a lid on this and let it steam away for about five minutes or so, just until those green beans start to turn bright, bright green. Then you can remove the lid and let them cook for another, say, minute or two you'll see the liquid will evaporate and this is a good time to just season them up simply with some salt, some pepper, and a little sprinkle of freshly grated Parmesan cheese if you feel so inclined. If you're looking for a really yummy main dish to serve these green beans with, I highly recommend this awesome Parmesan chicken and rice skillet. So, so good. My next side dish has a really beautiful Asian influence. We're going to be stir frying some green vegetables and then tossing them in an incredible sauce. This sauce actually all starts with some fish sauce. Now, don't panic if you've never tried fish sauce before or you haven't been a fan to this point. Trust me, I am all about making people believers. Fish sauce has the most incredible savory flavor and it doesn't actually taste like fish, especially once it's mixed with all of these ingredients. Now, if you can't get past the fish sauce, go ahead and swap in some soy sauce in this recipe instead, because of course I wouldn't want you guys to miss it. It's really, really tasty. 
To my fish sauce, I'm going to add a little splash of water. This is just gonna help dilute the flavors a little bit, and also our vegetables are going to steam up in that water as well. Next, for a little more tang, I've got some rice vinegar headed into this vinaigrette. I have got some lime juice headed in here, so nice, fresh lime juice. What's not to love? It's tart and tangy, super citrusy and flavorful. And then to balance out all that savory and tangy flavor, I'm also going to be adding some sweetness with a little bit of honey. Now, traditionally, a sauce like this is made with white sugar, but you guys know I don't use a ton of processed sugar in the kitchen. If white sugar is what you have on hand, though, go ahead, you can definitely use that instead. For some delicious garlic flavor, I'm gonna go ahead and grate some garlic right into my dressing. Of course, you could always use minced garlic if you want to, but when you grate the garlic, it really incorporates into your sauce, which I love. Finally, to add just a bit of spice, I've got a couple Thai chilies that I've just finely chopped. If you wanna skip the spice here, you definitely can. It is totally up to you. I'm gonna whisk that mixture together, and then it's time to get to work on stir-frying my greens. So I've got a nice big skillet heating up on the stove. I always prefer non-stick when I'm stir-frying because it just makes life easier, but it's totally up to you. I'm going to get some oil heated up in my pan, and once that oil is nice and hot, I'm going to pile in my greens. Today, I'm using a combination of chopped baby bok choy. I've got some broccoli florets headed in here, as well as some snap peas. You can really use any kind of greens you want in this recipe, because let's be honest, it is all about that fish sauce vinaigrette. I'm gonna let those cook up for about two to three minutes or so, and as soon as they start to turn bright green, I'm going to get my fish sauce vinaigrette right into the pan. I'll let this cook up for another two to three minutes. You'll see that vinaigrette starts to evaporate, and all you're left with are perfectly tender vegetables and a whole lot of amazing flavor. Guys, as far as I'm concerned, this side dish is a perfect 10. It's also the perfect accompaniment to my amazing sesame crusted salmon. Seriously good stuff. Finally, lovelies, when I was growing up, carrots were always my favorite side dish. Today, I've got a fun way to make them just a touch more sophisticated with these amazing balsamic roasted carrots, and they're so easy to make. I am actually cheating here with some baby carrots, you know, the kind that are already peeled and chopped. If you wanna use regular carrots, go ahead, peel them and chop them yourself, totally up to you. To my carrots, I'm going to add some olive oil, some balsamic vinegar, which is nice and tangy and a bit sweet. And finally, just a little hit of honey. I'll season these up liberally with some salt and some pepper, give them a quick toss, and then pour them onto a parchment-lined baking sheet. I should mention that parchment paper is key here because cleanup with this dish can be a bit of a mess without it. Don't say I didn't warn you. We're gonna get these beauties into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. For say 30 minutes or so, you'll wanna give them a good toss about halfway through cooking to make sure they cook evenly. You're just looking for your carrots to be nice and tender, and they'll have this amazing sort of caramelized exterior that you will not be able to get enough of. Top them with a little bit of fresh thyme, and you have a side dish that no one is going to complain about. I hope you guys will give all of these tasty ideas a try. And if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because as always, I love seeing your kitchen creations. Keep in mind, all of these yummy recipes are being featured on healthymealplans.com, so you can find them there. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.